You're listening to Quantum Conversations with Karen Curry Parker. Join us as we explore new frontiers in consciousness, science, and evolution. And now here's your host, Karen Curry Parker. There's a lot of dialogue floating around about feminine leadership, the patriarchy, and how to empower women. But if you carry in your cells generations of trauma and disempowerment, and you've never actually seen what it looks like to live fully as a woman and a leader, the only path you have to follow is the default path of success that uses masculine metrics that, if we're really honest, don't really fit us as women. Despite checking off the boxes of worldly accomplishments, most high-achieving women are secretly dissatisfied. They feel stuck in lives that look perfect on the outside, yet on the inside they're unfulfilled, plagued by the nagging feeling that there's got to be more. They feel guilty and ungrateful for feeling trapped in lives that seem so good. They disown their pain or numb it with excessive work, eating, drinking, shopping, social media, or exercising. They search for solutions in books, meditation, yoga, therapy, medication, and workshops, but they know that something is still missing. In her new book, Patriarchy Stress Disorder, Dr. Valerie Rain talks about what women really need to do to change the metrics of feminine success and how to heal from generations of being discounted, being told to sit down and be quiet or worse. Please join me for a powerful quantum conversation with Dr. Valerie Rain as we explore the path to healing the trauma that women carry from lifetimes of disempowerment and oppression. Hi, I'm Karen Curry Parker. Welcome to Quantum Conversations. Dr. Valerie Rain, author of the new book, The Patriarchy Stress Disorder, believes that many women are living in a metaphorical prison that is rooted in trauma caused by ongoing events and also experienced from ancestral memories carried on a cellular level. She proposes that to help women achieve in an authentic way, to tap into their authentic gifts, those gifts that women have to bring to the world, and to fulfill their highest potential, we have to first recognize the trauma that women carry. We have to redefine trauma and help women heal their trauma, both cognitively and physically. I am so excited to welcome Dr. Valerie here today for a quantum conversation. Welcome, Dr. Valerie. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. I'm so delighted to be here, and thank you for uh, our listeners for tuning in. Thank you. So in your book, you start right off the bat, before you even get to the first chapter, talking about redefining trauma. Why, what is your definition of trauma, and why do you think we have to redefine trauma? My definition of trauma is any experience that made you feel unsafe, physically or emotionally, and led to developing trauma adaptations to keep you safe going forward. And those adaptations can be thoughts, reactions in the body, or actions. Mm -hmm. And in the aftermath of trauma, it's not the trauma anymore that hurts us. We survived, whatever that was. But it's the adaptations that are now serving as prison guards in the invisible inner prison of trauma and are holding us back from our dreams and desires. Or if we are going for our dreams and desires, they're frying up our nervous system. Mm. And that's why it's so important to redefine trauma. I have two graduate degrees in psychology, and in both programs, um, the way we learned about trauma was a life-threatening event. Mm -hmm. So armed with that learning, I was really puzzled. I struggled myself. I was in therapy for years. I struggled with anxiety. I struggled with depression. And I had symptoms of trauma. And I was mm -hmm. puzzled because I didn't have any life-threatening experiences in my life. And it was only after I stumbled into mind-body trauma resolution work 
that I started experiencing relief from anxiety, depression. My, I actually began to feel like myself because the trauma was being released from my body. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got really curious about what kind of trauma could I have? And, and also when I started using the tools with my female clients, they all have the same experience. Mm-hmm. What trauma could we all have? without even realizing it. And that's when the research started coming into my view, research on intergenerational transmission of trauma, Mm -hmm. that trauma is literally transmitted in the DNA and realizing that while women have been oppressed for thousands of years, oppression is traumatic. Mm -hmm. And we, as in our lineage, in our female lineage, we've had to develop those trauma adaptations, ways to stay safe in the environment where it's never been safe for a woman to be visible, let alone powerful. And so that led to the discovery of PSD. (laughs) Okay. So I, I love this definition of trauma that you have, because I do think it explains so much. I mean, you and little snippets in your book, when I was going through, you have little gems in there in in your paragraphs. And one of the things that really leapt out at me was you talked about ADD and ADHD as being a trauma response. And, and I don't want to, you know, I want to really be mindful of saying, oh, it doesn't exist as a, as a disorder, but looking at the data on just the diagnostic rates of ADD and ADHD. And I, I think the last time I, and I haven't looked at these recently, but it was something like one in three children in the United States is diagnosed with ADD, ADHD. And, that really doesn't match up with what the postmortem studies show when we look at brains, right? So there's there's something happening in our culture that is more than just a life-threatening event, because I would say the vast majority of us aren't having life-threatening events. Yes. So what a brilliant, brilliant uh, redefinition of mm. trauma. And then you go and you, you specifically in this book talk about the trauma of women and you identify it as patriarchy stress disorder. Talk to me about what is patriarchy stress disorder and how does it impact women and what are the symptoms? Mm. First, thank you for insightfully bringing, bringing up um, e- e- health expressions such as um, ADHD. I would also add anxiety, depression. I would add Um, most health conditions, because most health conditions are stress-related, even by conventional medical opinion, about 90% of all health conditions are related to stress. And what is stress is a nervous system reaction to keep us safe Mm -hmm. when we're feeling unsafe. And there's a lot going on in our culture and in our personal lives that may create that experience of not being safe. That's for people across the gender spectrum. Mm -hmm. And for women specifically, what is patriarchy stress disorder? It is the ancestral trauma of oppression that we've inherited. And it expresses in its adaptations. I describe them as showing up in the mind, body, and actions domains or Uh, MBA for short, Mm -hmm. in the mind, they show up as the inner critic, the imposter syndrome, the upper limit problem, anything, any stories, any thoughts that are making us to feel less than and keep us from having the life that we want, keep us having, waging this war on our own bodies because we never look good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because under patriarchy, we can never be good enough. (laughs) And and that is not our fault. It's not our shortcoming. It's nothing that's wrong with us. We're not broken. It it is a trauma adaptations that are telling us, okay, it's not safe to be visible. If you're too visible, you'll be in trouble. You'll be raped. You'll be uh, burned at the stake. Bad things will happen. Of course, it all lives in our subconscious. And an interesting thing that I discovered while working on the book is research in neuroscience that shows consistently again and again that our actions are decided in our subconscious. Mm. Period, end of story. 
well, or the beginning of story, because <laughs> then our mind begins to create stories about why we're making these choices, but the mind is not the primary driver. It's our subconscious, mm -hmm. and our subconscious wants us to be safe. And on the level of the body, that shows up as anxiety, depression, ADHD, those things begin, they start out as trauma adaptations, ways to keep us safe. But then if not addressed, they can become their own beasts, their own mm. entrenched conditions. So they start out as adaptive. Anxiety is mobilizing us to run away, run or well, fight. Depression is the freeze response. Let me play dead. And, and be left alone because I don't feel safe. Adrenal fatigue, we see that so much with high-achieving women right now mm -hmm. because they're playing in the areas that are historically have been forbidden for women. Mm -hmm. The nervous system feels unsafe, 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 and is driving up that um, adrenal overload. And burnout is pandemic, as we know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the level of action... It's either going into fight or flight response or in the freeze response, either going for it and then having the, the fallout in the nervous system activation that then causes um, trouble sleeping or trouble stopping and relaxing without a glass of wine, managing that overload. Or in the freeze, you want something, you have a desire, but, 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 but procrastination comes up self-sabotage, or oh, I can do it now. And, and there you have it. It's, it's the freeze response. So it, this is what PSD actually looks and feels like on the daily basis. And if, if you're already feeling it, this is for our listeners. If you're feeling it, if you're recognizing it, just take a deep breath, feel your feet on the floor, feel your body supported by the furniture, take a deep breath. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm. Beautiful. So, so you talked about burnout, which I want to just kind of zero in on for just a second, because I think burnout is sort of the generalized buzzword that sort of encompasses everything in the, in, when we talk about fail, you know, problems with motivation, we talked about adrenal fatigue, we talk about being physically burned out. You know, last year, the World Health Organization actually defined burnout as a medical issue. Yeah. But they specifically said that it was strictly work related, and it could not be a result of generalized other stuff happening in somebody's mm -hmm. life. But you're saying with your definition of trauma, that there is a correlation between trauma and burnout, and that that trauma is not necessarily work related, but it is still contributing significantly to yes. burnout. So when women are experiencing these symptoms, they are burned out. They are struggling with sleep. They have anxiety, depression. They are being given opportunities and then failing to follow through on them and maybe even beating themselves up then for thinking, oh, I'm lazy or I'm a procrastinator or whatever. Mm -hmm. These are some of the symptoms of patriarchy stress disorder. How do you heal this? Especially if, if like this is being carried on a cellular level, what do we do to start unlocking the door to this prison? Mm. Yeah, we start by recognizing that we're indeed in this prison. And I have a five-step system that I describe in the book. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a five-stage journey that starts with waking up in prison, taking a look at the layers of inherited and experienced trauma as the source of what you've been led to believe that something is wrong with you. Mm. And that alone, I feel, and I, I see in my practice, gives people a huge sigh of relief, mm -hmm. recognizing, oh my gosh, there's nothing wrong with you. There is a word for it. Um, there's a name. It's, it's something that we all experience, and here is why. And once we lay down the the blame, self-blame, the guilt mm -hmm. for feeling this way. And by the way, we're not blaming men either. We're not blaming anything or anyone. We're looking at the root cause of this condition, which is oppression, disempowerment, which has been traumatic. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's all about healing. And so the next steps 
In the second step, we recognize those prison guards. We recognize trauma adaptations, how exactly they play out, play out for you in the mind, mm -hmm. in the body, and in the actions. And you map them out. You learn what they uh, look like, what they sound like, how they behave. And you actually befriend them. We're not trying to obliterate them because that's our biology trying to keep us safe. We don't want to work against biology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the third step, we help the prison guards evolve into our bodyguards. So instead of keeping us safe by keeping us in prison, they can keep us safe on the journey toward the life that we want to create. This is mm -hmm. the quantum leap, right? Mm -hmm. This is the biology mm -hmm. that we need to activate to be on our side, to play with it, not against it. And we do it by creating mind, body, um, experiences of safety and healing. And in the next step, we go deeper into healing trauma. I call it digging the tunnel, where mm -hmm. we go through the layers. And with each layer, we liberate more capacity to enjoy life and also more capacity to go deeper and heal and then liberate even more capacity to enjoy life. And then the, in the fifth step, we emerge on the outside and I call it savoring freedom. And believe it or not, that may be surprising to some people because we think, oh, if only I get there, if only I uh, get that promotion, if only I uh, reach this revenue in my business, if only I get this relationship, my life is going to be great. And what happens actually is that we begin to discover that our systems have been our channels for running joy, power, excitement, receiving abundance have been withered, all mm. but atrophied because it has never been a practice for women. It has been specifically forbidden. Mm -hmm. So we've worked through the forbidden part by now, but now what we experience on the outside is what I call pleasure police. We feel if we're driving too fast into pleasure, oh, my, my income <laughs> is rising and something else begins to like self-sabotage in the background. Again, not our fault. We just need to create safety in this whole new world and keep on expanding our ability, our capacity, our physical capacity to to run this goodness, this juicy goodness through our system. And that I call shifting from the game of survival, the game of how much can I bear, to the game of how good can it get, mm. the game of thriving. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so, okay, modern society, so forgive me for this question. How long does this take? <laughs> <laughs> a great question, Karen. I'm at it every day, um, pretty much nonstop. In my free time, I, I, I do work with others. Um, the truth is every step on this journey is a quantum leap in the possibilities of your life. Mm -hmm. Every step, you heal one layer, which may take you one day. It may take you a few weeks. It may take you... A few moments, right? Depends. And then you liberate these new possibilities. And then from this place of new possibilities, okay, what else can I heal? What else can I open up? So it's not a project to get done with. It's, it's a journey of discovering, okay, what's around the bend? How mm -hmm. good can it get? How good can I have it? How, how much can I bring into my life of all, everything I desire, joy, uh, impact, um, love, uh, fitness, what, whatever it is that's right in the realm of those desires. Beautiful, beautiful. So I, I want to take a second because one of the things we like to do in, in quantum conversations is talk about the future. I believe that for us to create a more equitable, sustainable, peaceful world, we have to have inspiration and a vision of what else is possible. So I like to ask all of my guests, what do you see as a future of the world? And I want for you specifically, I'd love to hear for you, what is your vision for the future of the world of women? What vision do you hold today that will pull us all as women, as mothers, as mothers of daughters, pull us forward into the future of women 
being free from this trauma? What does that future look like? Mm, I love this question. And just this morning, I was connecting with that vision. Mm. And what I was seeing is the world where women have woken up. It really like waking up from a dream. And in that dream, we had limitations. In that dream, we had this inner critic. We looked in the mirror and we like never liked what we saw. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have true sisterhood because there was like all, all all that noise, right? All that patriarchal noise. And we experienced limitations inside and outside of us. And in my vision, women have woken up from that. That is that quantum transformation. That is that mm. leap. And they're looking around and they're fully feeling their power and they're fully feeling their beauty. That's the experience. It's completely congruent. It is completely unconditional. It, and in fact, if anyone was to question her power or her beauty, she would laugh. It would be like somebody suggesting that the earth is flat. It's just <laughs> <laughs> ludicrous. I love what that. What do you mean? I love that. And women coming together in sisterhood and connecting with their power, also discovering the power that we have to create anything in the world with others. So any change that we desire politically, socially right women we can make it happen i don't want to leave men out because we want men in this movement we want men in this work if you are human you have trauma so there's a lot to heal for people Mm -hmm. across the gender spectrum and this is specifically for women because i this this is my focus this is This is where I feel the greatest potential for the world's change. Literally, the vision that I have is creating the opportunity for change in the world that does not exist now and Mm -hmm. cannot exist unless women wake up to their true power, to their true beauty, and shed the trauma and the lies of oppression. Beautifully said. Thank you. you. So Dr. Valerie's book, Patriarchy Stress Disorder by Dr. Valerie Rain is available on amazon.com. And you have an upcoming program that that, uh, helps women who are experiencing patriarchy stress disorder. You want to tell us a bit about it? Absolutely. The book itself will take you on this journey. And if you desire a community on this journey, a community of practice. And I'm a big believer in community for healing because our trauma was created in community. Mm -hmm. So healing needs to happen in community. So that's why we're creating this program. The program already exists. We are taking it on a larger scale. So it's going to be a, a journey that you can take from the convenience of your own home, from your own computer. We call this the thriving solution Mm. and it is the thriving solution it's all about shifting out of survival into thriving in every area of your life in the area of money and health and relationships whatever you desire to create we're going to be walking through these five steps together and um, the easiest way to get notified uh, go to drvalerie.com. You can get on the wait list there. Or subscribe to my newsletter. It's um, it's all there available for you. I also have tools, starter tools on my website that you can start exploring right now. For example, there is a tool that I call a repower tool. Whenever you're feeling not fully in your body, mm. not fully in your power, Uh, Maybe you got triggered, maybe you thought of something that got you going, maybe there is a a situation that is upsetting to you. Uh, It's an audio practice that exercise itself takes a couple of minutes. There is a neuroscientific spiel that I also give in it, and it's at drvalerie.com forward slash repower. 
And Beautiful. you can also just get into the conversation by uh, following me on social media, Dr. Valerie Rain on everything. And I'm open to receiving your messages. Message me on Facebook or Instagram. Shoot me an email, Valerie at drvalerie.com. Stay connected. And um, whether or not this journey um, and being a part of the community feels aligned at this time, Stay in the conversation if it resonated with you, because this is how we're keeping this vision alive, as in quantum possibilities. It's, you know, you are all participant observers in this yes. life. You're all participating. And so the more we're reflecting this quantum possibility to each other and keeping with this vision together the more way bringing it into being. So thank you for being a part of this movement. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Dr. Valerie, and just so you guys know, it's D-R-V-A-L-E-R-I.com, drvalerie.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for this beautiful body of work and for finally giving a name to this. (laughs) And uh, we look forward to sharing more quantum conversations with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. I have a 10-year-old daughter who cried at the dinner table last week because she's angry and hurt that we don't have enough women leaders and that we have yet, at least in the United States, to have a woman president. She feels devalued and that she doesn't have a voice in steering the future, all of this at 10 years of age. My daughter is frustrated because she feels that women would be better leaders and by nature would be more concerned with global issues such as peace and climate change. I feel her pain. I'm not saying that men don't or can't have the solutions to the challenges facing humanity, but when more than half of the people on the planet are significantly disenfranchised or disempowered and you're part of that repressed half, It's hard to feel that you have a place at the table that is steering the creation of the future of the world. I feel her pain. I'm not saying that men don't or can't have the solutions to the challenges facing humanity. But when more than half of the people on the planet are significantly disenfranchised or disempowered, and you're part of that repressed half, it's hard to feel that you have a place at the table that is steering the creation of the future of the world. Last year, I did a survey of my subscribers. I had more than a thousand responses to my survey. 93% of the women who responded to my survey reported that they had been a victim of some kind of sexual abuse or trauma. 87% of the respondents reported themselves as being burned out. In the work that I do with clients, I cannot separate trauma and burnout. Trauma causes people to use vital life force energy to just get by in the world. This leaves little energy for genuine creativity or for being able to access the solutions necessary to heal the world. Since the first wave of feminism, we've been using metrics of success that are rooted in masculine archetypes. Metrics of success that don't often measure the full potential of feminine success and leadership. I want my daughters to live in a world where they can be successful and safe in a way that feels aligned for them. Heck, I want that for my sons too. If the greatest barrier for women now and ahead are internal, we must help women heal this ancestral pain and clear their success blueprint clear a path for women and men to create success in a healthy, aligned way that allows them to tap into their true genius, the full capacity of their creative power. This is vital if we're going to create a world of equitable, sustainable peace. Knowing your human design chart and using the quantum alignment system is a powerful way to get to the root cause of ancestral pain so that you can unlock your potential and fully activate your creativity. If you'd like to get your free human design chart and personalized report, please visit freehumandesignchart.com. I'm Karen Curry Parker, and as a woman, an entrepreneur, and a mother, I'm ready to take my right place in the leadership of the world. 
I hope that you'll join me. Thank you for sharing this powerful quantum conversation with me. Thanks for listening to Quantum Conversations with Karen Curry Parker. For more information, visit joyfulmission.com.